Come with me as I pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for this another opportunity that you have given us to gather together. We ask you, Lord, to continue to bless us in spite of ourselves. We ask you, Lord, to remove any distraction, remove any element that is not pleasing in your sight in this place. And we ask you to fall afresh on us. Lord, we ask you to bless those who are here and bless those who could not be here for whatever the reason. But right now, Lord, we ask you to send a word, send a word. that will touch the heart of your people, yes. that will give us a clearer direction yes. and a clearer focus yes. as we strive to endure the trials and tribulations of life yes. and seek to make heaven our home. Yes. We ask you to be with us now, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen. amen. And amen. Come with me to the Gospel of St. Matthew. Chapter 6. Beginning with the fifth verse. And then it is our custom here. Let us reverence the word of God by standing if we are physically able. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly and when you pray do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do for they think that they will be heard for their many words therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word for the edification of our souls. Hallowed be thy name. I want to talk to you briefly on this morning from the subject, the priority report. The priority report. A few years prior to me being called to New York as pastor, Lauren 
Mosley was in her first or second year of middle school. And in her first or second year of middle school, she began to have debilitating headaches. The headaches were so bad, Sister Shirley, that she could barely function at times. They were not headaches that occurred every day. But from time to time, she would get these debilitating headaches and they would cause her not to be able to function. There came a time that the headaches became so bad that a physician needed to be called in to investigate what the problem was. To my surprise, one day at work, I got a phone call. And the phone call I received, the person told me there's a possibility that your daughter has a growth on her brain. Being a father, there's something that bothers you when you're not able to fix the things that are wrong with your children. I had heard the words of the physician. I had seen some of the reports, but I knew that God was a healer. I knew enough to take it out of the hands of the doctors uh -huh. and place it in the hands of the healer. Yes. I come by here on today to let you know that we need to begin to place our life, our situations, and our families into the hand of the healer. Yes. And just like Lauren, everything is going to be all right. All right. We need to begin to make the healer our focus. We need to start giving God the attention that he requires. We need, Sister Sue, to start making God the priority. The priority report today is that we need to put God first. And we put God first by acknowledging him as holy. When we pray, Hallowed be thy name. What we are acknowledging is that God's name is holy. We need to make God our priority. Because sometimes the unexpected is going to happen. We need to make God our priority. Because sometimes the going gets rough. We need to make God our priority. And when we make God our priority, miracles take place. When we make God our priority, healings occur. Yes. When we yes. make God our priority, loved ones get saved. Yes. When we make God our priority, weeping may endure for a night. Joy. Yes. But joy Amen. comes in the morning. Amen. When we make God our priority, we may walk through the valley of the yes. shadow of death. Yes. But yes. with God, yes. I don't have to fear no, no evil. I dare you today, even though it's warm in here, to make God your priority. Yeah. And I promise you, if you make God your priority, he can do exceedingly, yeah. abundantly, yeah. above all that we can ask yeah. or think. The priority on today is to acknowledge God as being a holy God. But see, we have to understand that when we acknowledge God as holy, he is the only one that is deserving of that recognition. Yes. If you didn't know, now you know God should have his own honor. He shouldn't be sharing honor with mama. He shouldn't be sharing honor with daddy. He shouldn't be sharing honor with the children. He should not be sharing honor with the pastor. He should not be sharing honor with the deacon because God deserves his own honor. 
God has his own honor simply because of who he is. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. He is the only one that can forgive sins. God is worthy of his own honor. He should not be sharing his honor with anybody, any place, or anything because God is the only one worthy of praise. But see, we understand that we should always, we should always be honoring God as holy. But see, the Bible says that all have sinned and falling short of the glory of God. So that means sometimes we're not going to give God the honor that's due to him when it's due to him because we are imperfect. Yes. But when we fall down, the Bible says that we need to get back up. Get back up. As soon as we realize that we are not honoring God for who he is, yes. we need to change our perspective. Yes. And start acknowledging him for the holy God he is. And let me throw this in parenthetically. We don't honor God just with our lips. Somebody missed that. It's not just something that we quote in our prayer. It's something that needs to be planted in our hearts. In our hearts, we must understand that he's a holy God. And if we understand that he's a holy God, our actions will reflect the fact that we have a holy God planted on good soil, bringing forth good fruit. But see, when we look at when we look at Matthew, we learn a lot about who God is and the characteristics of His holiness. See, Matthew states that God is accessible. Matthew also states that we serve a good God. Our God is a holy God. holy God. He's long suffering. He's perfect in every way without blemish or a spot. Yes. He's all powerful. He's provident. He's unequal. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's unified. Yes. He's wise. wise. Well, see, understand this. We don't talk about this much, but God is wrathful. Mm -hmm. yes. He cannot be a holy God with his wrath subtracted from him. Amen. But see, in our text, in our text on today, Jesus instructs us with the first petition in the disciples' prayer to pray, hallowed be thy name. That is an acknowledgement of his holiness. This means that we are treating God with the highest honor and we acknowledge that he and he alone is set apart to be identified as holy. We, when we declare that God is holy, Amen. we are declaring that our God the God that we worship is perfect in every way. Perfect in every shape. And perfect in every form. And the Bible says, be ye perfect. But I am perfect. Oh, you say, I can't do that. I can't do all that. I can't be perfect in every way. Every shape. In every form. But beloved, we must be striving to be perfect. In every way, every shape, in every form, daily we should be conforming to the image of Christ. I don't care what folks say about you. We ought to be conforming to the image of Christ. I don't care what comes your way. We have to be conforming to the image of Christ. I don't care what happened when you grew up. We have to be conforming to the image of Jesus Christ. Be ye perfect. Because... I am perfect. When we declare that God is perfect, we are declaring that he doesn't have any imperfections. 
we are declaring that God is morally and enduringly to seek. We are declaring that the Most High God is committed to his creation. Because remember at the beginning, we fell away from him. We broke the covenant in Eden. But he's a covenant-making God and a covenant-keeping God. And he is committed to us. God is spiritually excellent. And see, when we begin to grasp the holiness of God, we understand that when we pray, his name should be held in high regard in our hearts. His name is to be hallowed through our words and especially in our hearts. And when we live each day, we will bring forth fruit that shows evidence that we have him on the inside. But to understand his holiness just a little bit more, he is independently holy. What that means is that he doesn't need you or me to make him holy. What we do on Sunday morning doesn't detract from his holiness or add to it. He is independently holy in his being. But not only is he independently holy, he's infinitely holy. What does that mean? He was holy, he is holy, and he will continue to be holy. He's independently holy. Infinitely holy and immutably holy. That means he ain't going to change. If he was holy then, he's going to be holy now. If he's holy now, he's going to be holy in the future. He's independently holy. He's infinitely holy. He's immutably holy. With us understanding this, Do we honor God as holy in unexpected situations? Because see, throughout my 44 years, it's easy to honor his holiness when things are good. It's easy to focus on it when things are going your way. But sometimes we get distracted in the tough times. Yes. Sometimes we get distracted in the hard times. Yes. Sometimes we begin to focus on other things when we need to be focusing on God. Yes. So my question on today is how do we honor God's name as holy in unexpected times? Number one, there must be a desire for truth. I want you to grasp that. There must be a desire for truth. If we are going to grasp God's holiness, there must be a desire for what is true. If we are going to, to desire what is true, we must seek truth. And the truth about God is found in the pages of scripture. Truth is manifested through the hunger for the word. And if we take a step back, the hunger for the word is fueled by the new birth. So there must be regeneration. That means you become a baby in Christ. And like a baby, you desire the milk of the word. You hunger and you thirst for the righteousness of God. And once you hunger and thirst for the righteousness of God, you will find yourself in the pages of Holy Writ feeding yourselves. But once we seek truth, Sister Sandy, this truth needs to follow some good ground. Amen. 
And so once we find this truth, we have to internalize the truth. Too many times we hear the truth and it bounces right back off of us. That's why there ain't been no change. That's why you're still struggling with the same stuff you were struggling with 30 years ago. There must be an internalization of the holiness of God. And once there is an internalization, says the Pearson, the next step is evangelism. Somebody missed that. Somebody think evangelism is what the team do. But see, that's not what evangelism is. Evangelism is sharing what you have internalized. I'm not talking about you just telling folk the scriptures that you know. But I'm talking about you living the scriptures that you know. That means once we have internalized God on the inside, something has to manifest itself on the outside and we call it good fruit. Do I got some folk in here that want to manifest some good fruit? What does help you? And I want you to understand this clearly. There's a difference between being a convert and being a disciple. A convert is one who's been converted. A disciple is one who follows Christ. Amen. Actually does what he says. So we are called not to be converts only. We are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. That means if we're going to be disciples of Jesus Christ, we are no longer just hearers of the word. We are doers of the word as well. So what God is calling us to do is to get the truth about him that is found in the pages of scripture. He's telling us to internalize it and then to share it in word and deed because we are disciples of Jesus Christ and disciples of Jesus Christ Make more disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then make more disciples of Jesus Christ. All right, all right. So point number one. There must be a desire for truth. All right. Point number two. There must be an intentional effort to bring forth that good fruit. Let me tell you, the key word is intentional. An intentional effort. Because sometimes, foot won't get on your nerves. Can I get an amen? amen. But you gotta have an intentional effort. Some folks, sometimes folks won't call you everything, but a child of God, you have to put forth an intentional effort. Sometimes you're gonna be sleeping and you don't feel like getting up, but you gotta put forth an intentional effort. Sometimes you're gonna be tired from work, but you gotta put forth an intentional effort if you're going to serve God. What are you saying, Pastor? There must be an outward manifestation of the inward declaration yes, yes. of the holiness that we claim is in our lives. I'm going to say that again. If somebody missed that, there must be an outward manifestation of our inward declaration of his holiness in our life. That means, sister, so we just can't say he hope. My God. Amen. All right. Yeah. Jesus. We just can't recite it when we pray. Because God knows if we recite it or not. Yes, he does. But you got to have it in your heart because it's an inward declaration and it has an outward manifestation in your life. Hallelujah. When we declare what we are saying is that when we declare we're saying that we long for the name of the Lord to be prevalent in our lives. We long for his character to be the character that we pattern our character yes. to. Yes. 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 On a daily basis, 
I know sometimes we get distracted with things, but are we trying to pattern our lives like Jesus? Are we trying to walk like Jesus? Are we trying to talk like Jesus? Or are we trying to conform ourselves to the world? But Jesus is saying, if I'm holy in your life, you got to act like me. You got to walk like me. You got to talk like me. You need to tell folks about me. The needs to be an outward manifestation of the inward declaration of the holiness of God that we declare. We are not called just to be talkers. Somebody missed that. We're not called just to be talkers. We're called to be doers. The problem in the world today is the church has stopped being doers. We want to be seen, but we don't want to do. We want folks to see us in our suits. We want to hear, we have to hear them say, good message, Doc. But we don't want to do what we need to do for the kingdom of God. The Bible says that we are to deny ourselves. That ain't popular. It says, take up your cross. That ain't popular. Follow me. That ain't popular because we're going to follow you all the way to Calvary. So there must be a desire for truth. A disciple is a follower, a learner, a student. So there must be a desire for the truth. We must be intentional to bring forth good fruit. But last but not least, if we are going to make God a priority, we must have constant awareness of his presence. See, many times we think just because we don't see God, God is not watching. We think because we don't see God, he doesn't hear us. We think because we don't see God, he doesn't know what's in our hearts. But we must be aware of the fact, Sister Billy, that God is always present. Yes. There must be an acknowledgement by the believer that God is always with us. There must be an understanding in good times and in bad times that God is always with us. Sometimes they're going to be stormy days and sometimes they're going to be sunny days. But we got to understand that God is always with us in times of despair. I must declare that God is with me. When situations stress me out, I need to understand that God is with me. When folks ain't acting right, the songwriter said, just keep your faith and never cease to pray. Just walk upright, call a noon, day or night, he'll be there, he'll be there. There's no need to worry because my God, he never, he never, he never, he never fails. Will we understand that God never fails? We have to be more conscious of his presence. Help me to be more aware of your presence. Help me to actualize your holiness. See, living with the conscious awareness of God, his presence, the believer sins less. The believer has a better relationship. The believer walks in purpose. The
The believer keeps on living right. The believer keeps on loving right. The believer keeps on worshiping right. The believer keeps on fellowshipping right. Because God, He never fails. He's never left us. He's never forsaken us. We've been doing hard times. Folk have talked about us. But I keep my focus on Jesus. No matter what you do. No matter what you say. Just keep the faith. Never cease to pray. Just walk upright. For the new day or night. He'll be there. Number one, there must be a desire 
the truth. Hide the word in your heart. Hide the word in your heart. Hide the word in your heart. Take a name and say, hide the word in your heart. Number two, there must be an intentional effort to bring forth fruit. Take a neighbor and say, be intentional. Tell your other neighbor, say, be intentional. But last but not least, there must be a constant awareness of the true and living God. He's the Alpha. He is the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. And he knows everything. Tell your neighbor, say, be aware. God is watching. Tell your other neighbor, say, be aware. God is watching. Be aware. God is watching. Point to yourself. Point, say, say, keep it holy. Keep it holy. Keep it holy. The doors of the church are open. Amen. You can come as a candidate for baptism by letter on your Christian experience. Today, if you want to make Jesus your priority, come.